What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access, and today we're joined by Young Hump. Thank you for coming through, sir. My brother. And, you know, we've had, uh, unfortunately, uh, a loss recently in rap. It's been a little minute now, but Bushwick Bill passed away. Um, peace, baby. Amazing member of the Ghetto Boys, and when Young Hump was telling me he was going to come through, he said he wanted to speak on Bushwick, and we thought we'd give a little homage and uh, pay some honor and respect to Bushwick who delivered a lot of great songs mm. and a lot of great music and a lot of memorable stuff over the years through rap. So for you, Young Hump, what makes Bushwick Bill and his legacy so significant? I mean, off top, he's just a legendary, iconic sight to behold. Off top, you just look at him and, 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 and from his physicality to his style of dress to the way he moves, to every, he's just a sight to behold. He's like the, you know, the 28th wonder of the world, right? I mean, he's just, he's just, he's just marvelous, beautiful. Mm -hmm. You start there. Then the first syllable out of his mouth, he has such a unique voice that just cuts through the air. Like, I don't even want to impersonate him. You can hear his voice. You don't need me to fucking try to do Bushwick's voice. But it's just, he just, you know, in the way he would deliver his lines, he would say it like he was just throwing it out there, but it was so profound. It wasn't like, I'm the, it was like, bah, bah. Mm -hmm. but it was so profound and he's just like, oh, releasing of it. So I always loved his phrasing and his, just his, his tonality was always incredible. And he always just had this like, in, this like, indifference to everything he was his own being he had, he had his own space you know he's in a group and he's rocking with the group but he was just such a unique figure that just stood um, stood on his own and he's brilliant man and i, I mean i mean a, a personal favorite was listening to the chronic first the first time mm, and at okay. this time you're sitting there you're just listening i don't know if that track like 11 or some shit like that you just all you already been you're dealing with, you know, <laughs> really getting your first dose of Snoop and Corrupt and Daz for the first time. You're like, oh, right. shit, Hootie's and RBX and all this shit's going on. And then out of nowhere, so at that point, really, the only voices you know is, is Dre and, and Snoop because of Deep Cover. But by this point, you're still familiarizing. And then out of nowhere, the familiar voice of Bushwick Bill comes in, right. but on some old Alfred Hitchcock shit. It is, <laughs> I says me. Yeah, right. You know, and you're like, <laughs> coming with, I mean... Incredible, and then he doesn't rap on the song, and it's like, who does that? How do you do that? Like, how does that happen? It was amazing, right. and I always thought, this is what's crazy. I now I don't. I'm just gonna just tell you what I heard. I always thought that it was some master pro producer. We should get Bushwick to come and lay this down. But what I heard was mm -hmm. that Bushwick was like, no, no, no. You need to let me do the intro. You so it was his mind. Right. It was a vision in his mind, and that's. Heavy. So that's one of the things I always think about with Bushwick, man. Yeah, I've had uh, a lot of interesting experiences with Bushwick, but I remember like the first time seeing him was uh, in the Raheem the Vigilante video <laughs> where he's jumping out the back of the truck with the, like the power cables or something. And I was just like, what Raheem is going on the in this? Vigilante. What is going it. on with this video? And then, um, you know, later. Yes! You know, you unique see. access. It gets no <laughs> better. Sorry. Yeah. And then, um, you uh, know, you see Bill on the album covers and stuff. But at this time, the Ghetto Boys didn't, you know, Raheem had video. But the Ghetto Boys, to my knowledge, and I never saw one at the time, had a video. But then, of course, on the album covers and everything, you could see he was uh, a dwarf and different things. But then the thing that I always thought was intriguing about it was that you know, with the Grip It on another level, and then the Ghetto Boys, the self-titled album, with the Size Ain't Shit. Like, he embodied it and was like, oh, okay, I'm a dwarf, come test me. And that, to me, was a big sign of empowerment and of strength of him, whereas a lot of people would look at that, like, apologize for it or act weird about it. He was like, Size owned, Ain't Shit. He owned his shit. Yeah. He owned his shit. Oof. And wh what'd you think about when you were hearing Size Ain't Shit? I mean... You couldn't have said any better. It was just amazing. Like, wow, he just really just took it. I mean, I mean, they say there's a saying that your your weaknesses are your greatest strengths if you know how to 
grab them. If you know how to grip it on that other level. And um, I mean, it's real. You got to right. learn how to turn it into your strength. And I mean, case in point, the infamous, iconic of all time album cover for We Can't Be Stopped. Yes. I mean, to have you in your quote unquote worst moment. Right. But to, to take it and he's on the flip, he's on the, the phone, the big boy phone. The block phone. The block <laughs> phone. He got Willie and Scarface push, pushing him. I mean, that shit was like, it trumped all the, all the like black power photos of all time. <laughs> that picture was just like, cause it's literally like the bullets right here. You can see the, 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 the inflamed, like still bloody wounded, open I, wound. Yeah. Like it's not just, oh, I'm, they got beat up by the cops and I'm standing here. It's like, I mean, it's. I mean, and to do that and to have the heart to do that and to do it nonchalant, going back to that, so nonchalant, going back to that indifference. He was on the phone. He wasn't like, nigga, that's what it is. He was just sitting there on the phone like, like it's nothing. Like he was telling somebody when, what kind of sandwich he wanted when they was at the- And <laughs> then the album is called We Can't Be Stopped. We Can't Be Stopped. Which I mean, made it crazy. And also on that album, we get the introduction really of the Chucky character right. that became something that was synonymous with him and then he went on with his solo career with the little big man and the opera and all right. these other things that he was doing. And Everclear Jones. <clears throat> I remember watching the video for that and just being like, it was like watching a movie. I mean, a movie. You were engrossed in it like six cents or some shit. You know, like right, one right, of those right. movies. You're just like, <sighs> <laughs> it was a And his honesty in that song. He said some things that, you know, you could get in trouble for saying. Well, he said a lot of things. That was the thing about the Ghetto Boys in general, and Bushwick definitely Fact. fits nicely into this, is that they were the first music and rap in particular, of course, because that's the overall majority of what I listened to, but yep. they were the first group that I listened to that I was afraid of or scared of. Like, yo, what are these dudes, like, you know, with Mind of a Lunatic and Everclear and some of these other songs that they did as a group and solo, even Chucky, I'm just like, yo, this is, you know, this is on another level. Like, what is, yeah. like, why would you, Right. okay, you think that, but why would you rap that? It's deep you say <laughs> that because remember, like, five years later, that was that little era with the grave diggers and they had right. little, trying to horrorcore, they had a yeah. little term they were trying to push for a second and didn't really take off like that, but, but they right. was on it years The probably. Flatliners, the Grave Diggers. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Years before stuff. the Ghetto Boys Dang. had that shit on pop. Yeah, and then Gangster Nip, who wrote Chucky, um, you know, he had it going on as well. Okay. And um, Shout yeah, out to Gangster yeah. Nip. <laughs> neighborhood Nip. Yeah, yeah, Neighborhood Nip and Gangster Nip. Yeah. But, um, and then the last time I saw Bushwick was last year at the Delicious Vinyl a block party, mm. you know, Master Ace and Karis One were there, and then Bushwick just, you know, randomly strolled through. So I got to see him there. It was I got a great picture with myself, him and D Barnes, which I didn't D post. Barnes, didn't salute. post. Didn't post or anything, just because that's I like to keep those things more to myself. But you hear that? I say that to say, it was cool to see the amount of reverence that people had for him uh, back in, in 2018 and then unfortunately passes this year. So it was just, you know, I was glad that you wanted to talk about Bushwick and give him some, some props. Man, man, I got two things to, to add real quick. One is I had this dream and this fantasy, which is doable, but I think we might have, I don't know if the time still works. I was imagining, just imagine mm -hmm. if they'd have had Peter Dinklage. Okay. AKA little man from Game of Thrones, my right. guy guy him as the speaker at Bushwick Bill's service. Mm -hmm. That would have been the illest shit of all time. He come out like, yo, cause you know, we fuck with Busta Rhymes, so you know he's down right. with it. That was just a dream I had. And I know Jay Prince could make that happen, but I don't know if they already had the service. Yeah. I imagine this might be a little bit late, but it still pull that off. And another thing I was gonna say is, man, I can't believe I didn't bring with me, I actually have a pin. You know, they got all those killer pins right now mm -hmm. um, that I got the Shock G, Humpty Hump, nose pin, you know, I got the, um, where the wheat would with a, with a, with a, go like this, and it's shock, and it go like this or something. Anyways, I got a Bushwick Bill pin from the cover, We Can't Be Stopped. Really? Yeah, Where'd you get I, that? I, uh, this cat I know, uh, my man Mike, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of his company right now, forgive me Mike, but Mike, you know who you are with the pins from the Bay Area, got these crazy, wow. crazy uh, pins, and, um, but you know what I do have? in honor of, of Bushwick Bill. 
I'm gonna run off camera for three seconds. Watch, one, two, three for Bushwick Bill. Jamaicans, Jamaicans, Jamaica's own. We love you, Bill. Bushwick, man. Rest in peace. Rest, Rest in peace, brother. And power. Yeah, and Shock says, what's up? He's gonna see you in Detroit. In the beginning, hip hop was ruled by the East Coast. Then the West Coast rose to prominence, thanks to gangster rap. Right hip hop changed the world. Gangster rap changed the narrative. And then changed the world again. The history of gangster rap features unheard stories, unseen photos and documents, all with exclusive interviews from the founders and players who shaped gangster rap. I think a real gangster rapper has to scare you a little bit. The history of gangster rap written by veteran rap journalist Soren Baker. In stores now. Yo, what up? This is DJ Quick. Be sure to pick up my homeboy Soren Baker's book, The History of Gangster Rap, if you really want to know what we do.